Right, let's begin. All right, thank you for attending. Apologies for absence and any reasons given. None. Brilliant. All right, minutes of the previous meeting. Has everybody read them? Yeah. Everybody happy? Yeah. Thanks. Everybody second? Brilliant. All thank agreed. you. Yes. Yeah. One moment. Let me show you. to install a memorial, it was a memorial tablet, um, but they wanted to install, them, install it themselves and do the work themselves, which we had to refuse because it's against our policy um, for health and safety and insurance purposes. Um, Councillor Worth has, although you've all agreed to um, say no to leaving the gates, the two gates shut, mm -hmm. He's asked again um, in Carter's Park for the food festival. Um, everybody is aware of the problem at Whole Beach Bank um, last weekend. Um, there is an issue with a bench put in Park Road Cemetery. Somebody's put a bench back there, but it's on a space that is two reserved plots, so it can't be there and needs to be moved somewhere more suitable. Um, I am in contact with South Holland regarding more bins. Um, Netherfield to be replaced and the picnic area at Carter's Park. I waited for them to come back to me. Did everybody see the update about the asbestos at the allotment? Um, they're finishing there this afternoon. And the duck food machine is currently residing in the office. Thank you very much. It's in your office. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right, um, on some of them issues, would you be corresponding about the bench to ask where it was previously? I can do, yeah. I can tell you. Well, you know where it was? It was it's always been on them two spaces. As, as, as far as I'm aware from I think it can't be there. No. Um, no. Um, having looked down there, I think the most sensible thing would be to try and do something, probably put a couple of slabs somewhere along the path mm -hmm. where, where there isn't any graves further up and just actually have it positioned there permanently because then it has not to move, be moved every time you're mowing as well, which is the other issue. So I think we need to try and liaise and try and find a suitable place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if you could mm -hmm. touch ground on them, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Carter's Park update to agree the tennis court's cleaning schedule and to discuss the use of the tennis courts by bikes. So we've had some reports of kids using bikes in there, and obviously that's not what it's designed for. Um, cleaning schedule, what did the company recommend once a year? Twice. Twice a year. It? Twice a year, I believe. It just needs, uh, the um, WCPM has all the maintenance schedule. I've got a copy here, but um, it's just something that probably needs doing once the leaves have fallen. Okay, so that's something to go on to staff's schedule. Yes, I think I recall that it was two um, treatments. One was a, like a light kind of clean, and then during the back end, when they went to be used, it, it was a deep clean with a pressure washer, but it was not to be at certain pressures and things like yeah. that. 
and, and with the bike issue, um, I've noticed that when I've gone through, there's a lot of bikes and they go in and they sort of prop them up on the inside of the tennis court, so they're then either kicking balls around or, or riding. Maybe we could look at signage that says, print cycles are prohibited in this area. Mm -hmm. As a deterrent on the, um, on the gates, it may be worth looking at that yeah. to stop that. I think signage would be mm -hmm. a good way forward. Yeah, if it's put high enough and it's big and clear, and it says cycles are prohibited in this enclosure, mm -hmm. um, I think that'll do the trick. Yeah, super. Is that something we can look into? So when do you want to do the cleaning? Well, now we're getting towards the end of the year, but it depends on who's going to do it. Oh, I think it's both probably. Well <laughs> 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 done. Um, I think the best thing to do, would, uh, I would say, wait until we get into October before you start thinking about doing that, because it's fairly new, so it's not like it's had a lot of usage this year, and then we get we'll find out how it reacts through a full year mm -hmm. and then we can put in the schedule for when we need because what I would potentially suggest is that this year it won't need a full deep clean it'll only need a bit of a tidy up and then potentially another tidy up just before the season starts yeah. again. So is it some of them should also hand over to the park manager to liaise with us and keep down it because he's their dealer? Yeah. Yeah. So. And with, like you're saying, when the leaves come off. Yeah, can we propose that we do that and get that agreed that in October it's done and then that's that one off the agenda? In the month of October. Yeah. 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 Can I have a proposal for that? Oh, thanks. Second. Second. All agreed? <laughs> okay, thank you very much. <coughs> So you agree with the park opening times and the siren sounding for closing time. So we're looking at the seasons, like the summer, winter. We've been asked about having the park open a little bit earlier because people want to use it to walk, jog, whatever, before work. Do we broach the subject to open it up a bit earlier? Yeah. I, I personally think that, certainly from the point of view of public and for our workforce, if you're going to potentially open it earlier in the summer, it gives people the opportunity to go out while it's cooler and mm -hmm. do whatever they want to do and it also gives our staff a chance to do work earlier in the day before the heat of the day gets up. Mm -hmm. um, for me it would be more sensible to have earlier opening times through the summer months and then obviously when the winter months start then you're going to bring them all back in line with where they are now, but certainly in the summer months I think it's something that we really ought to think about mm -hmm. um, bringing earlier. Um, as for closing, again, it's a matter of in the summer months you, you're going right up until about 10 o'clock at night, am I correct, Dan? Does it go right up to about 10? I think it's about 10, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Latest. Yes. Latest. Latest. You're giving information so you can't say. I think it's half past ten. Half past ten, right, okay. So whether we want to adjust that and say have a um, no earlier than time or something, maybe in the summer months for, so you go through the whole of the summer months because obviously it, it varies as you go through the summer as it does through the winter. So whether we do a no earlier than closing time. Or do we look at monthly times instead of seasonal times? I think it would probably be far, far simpler to change with the season because you know the summer for me has been cut short now and it's getting darker about mm -hmm. half eight. Mm -hmm. So when we get into those winter months where it's pitch black in there at six o'clock at night, we should really be pulling that and getting that locked down for, oh, for whatever reason. So if we had the summer months and the winter months, as I think we discussed in a previous meeting as opposed to going sort of monthly or whatever and um, if we've got the um, flexibility with the you know the, the contractor I don't see any reason why we, sh we shouldn't have those two. A lot of other places do do monthly. It just sounds a bit complicated time. to me. But no you just have to set time. But with sirens going off and you've got to like, keep changing them. And I mean I'm keener to get it open earlier to stop the bottom of the children going to school. Mm -hmm. Um, because there's getting a lot more cars down Park Road 
and the payment situation is not great. So if we could, I know it's not ideal to funnel them through Clark's Park, but it will alleviate some of the traffic and the kids down there. Because a lot of the parents like to drop off in Tesco's or mm -hmm. a Boston Road car park and the kids walk through, and that will take some of their cars away. Back in the day, we always used to walk through the park to school, so mm -hmm. it makes sense to many to put it back to how it used to be. Maybe. Well, even if it just eases that pressure yeah, a bit. Yeah. Road safety and all that. Exactly. For me, yeah, I, I agree. I think we need to be looking, certainly through the summer months, um, doing that really right from, really after Easter, really, mm -hmm. don't we? So all the way through. Um, because obviously in the summer, summer, the children are not at school, school, but then other people are wanting to use the park earlier before they go to work, mm -hmm. etc. Um, really, yes. if you're having an opening time of 7.30, it's not horrendously early. Um, and, you know, as we are recruiting, we can adjust the times of, of staff working mm -hmm. according to the need. Um, it's not like we're going to have to change anything too radically, but I think it would it would be sensible to look at certainly some things. So, our two blocks of times, right? So we're talking from October to April? Yeah. Well, when Easter falls, yeah. It's sometimes it's early, sometimes late. Yeah. yeah. So we are saying October to April, yeah. So suggest times for the October to April then, for our winter. For opening. For opening. I would say 8 o'clock. Okay. What does everybody else think? Yeah, it's sensible. Yeah. It'd still be open then for the school. It's um, nice enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the, the thing, in, obviously, in the winter is with bad weather, you, it will get muddy and stuff. But it the thing, thing with grass is it's very buoyant and it grows back. and. You know, you can have a bit if it's absolutely even down, they'll be dropping them off at the yeah, 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 the wall, yeah. Through the wall. Yeah. So I don't think it would uh, cause any problems to be open. Eh? So we say eight for the winter period, okay. yes. Okay, and for the summer opening, we say half past seven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So summer half past seven. Thank you very much. Oh. Can we agree that? I'll uh, propose it. Do you want to agree at closing time? Yeah, we'll do oh, a bit of the opening time. Yeah. Sorry. Seconder? Yeah. Isabel? Everybody agree? Fantastic, thank you. And the sound's siren for closing time, so. Five o'clock. <laughs> I hear that going off most nights. And I live a <laughs> mile, mile away. Yeah, yeah. So, winter months, we'll start with them again. So is, is that going to be an hour after sunset as it usually as it is in the bylaws, or are we, are we thinking of changing it altogether? I don't think it's, it's not in the bylaws, is it? Is. It is. It's an hour after sunset. It's an hour after sunset, which is why it fluctuates through the seasons. Mm. So, so we've got to look at changing the bylaw then. Yeah. It states in there. Do we have to leave alone for now then and do it as it already is? My understanding of the bylaws are they are actually a guide, they're not a governance, they're not, they're not actually, uh, they're an actual guide as to how you should operate, not an actual legal requirement, so we could make a decision to change it if we wanted. Okay, so that's something we'd have to take to full council then, isn't it? Yeah. So, depending on our discussion now, do we leave it as it is, or would we consider changing it? Would we like to, as a committee, put it forward to change? I mean, sorry to keep jumping in, but as it is, because it fluctuates and it changes, so the winter months it will be closed sooner, mm -hmm. we could actually just change the opening times and leave the closing times. As it as, is? Yeah, and that would actually kill two birds with one stone, Charlie. I think it's quite a good idea. But leave as it is for the time being. Yeah, I think if you if you were to leave it as it is and just alter the opening okay. times initially, see how that goes. If we feel that we want to adjust that, we can do that further down the line, can't we? Yeah. No, I think that's, that'd be brilliant. So, if we agree with that. If we just it? if we just I'll propose that the the times to open, and then if we leave. 
the other bit, but then if we have to change it, we'd have to suspend standing orders and stuff like that. Yeah. <coughs> so it's good if the that's yeah. Thank you very much. Right, to agree the way forward with regard to the vehicle at the gates following the public survey, what mm. info did you get from the public survey? Please? We had as we had a number of responses by email and telephone, and I added those to the responses um, received by the slips. So option one was to, um, so we had 37 responses altogether, which mm -hmm. was quite good. Open gates and leave permanently open was one. Open gates, daytime only, currently no budget was six, but leave them closed as they are now was 30. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, I will add this is just the letters what went to the immediate oh, no, it's plus the sorry, plus the, plus survey. the um, mm -hmm. online survey which came out in favour of yeah. I mean, um, the online survey you got a lot more responses, no, and they were not the people no. locally. Yeah. So, um, but it's the same outcome. It's the same outcome. No, that's yeah. fine. But I'm, this is from the letters. I'm more interested in what the residents in that area. I think the, the demonstration of the public consultation sways, but we still have to acknowledge the fact that people do have varying views on mm. it, and to accept the fact that some people even were generously offering to marshal the gate, which was so lovely of them, but the census of a public consultation is looking at the majority, the majority swear on this is to leave them as they are. Uh, if we was to leave them as they are, then we're going with the public wishes as per the consultation. So realistically, this is an opportunity for us to agree to do that um, in line with the responses that we addressed that we would do. Mm -hmm. um, so we've actually done what we said we would do. This is the result, the gates, I would propose that they stay as they are and then they can be reviewed in six months' time. Yeah. Anybody else got any input? Okay, so that means as we shut in the vehicular access with users' pedestrian access now. No. No, I believe it yeah, is. That was, that was the, the consultation that it would be a pedestrian yeah. access yeah. only. Yeah. So we look, because of the um, issues we've been having so far with that, we need to ensure that that gate cannot be removed and pushed open. Yeah. So a more permanent way of fixing it. Because we've had issues of it being shoved back. You can see the gouges within the car, like the car's been driven in there. So we can, there's got to be some sort of way we can anchor it. So it cannot be done. I think there was um, a member of the public sent in a lock bar that can be purchased anywhere, and I think there it was about thirty-four pounds, uh, and it's literally a bar that go literally locks into a footing and would make that more permanent. Oh, yeah. So there is an option there to, to to protect that. Obviously, the consultation was about the vehicle access, which mm -hmm. would clearly be leave it as it is, um, and then we can adopt the pedestrian and then keep an eye on it. So a few people I've spoken to are quite happy that that end is walkable now. So it's quite nice that they can, without having to go all the way around houses, they can use the park very easily. So I think that tradition has worked. Oh, if we just keep an eye on it at the moment and, and see if we can get something organised fairly swiftly to make it more secure. Yeah, I think if it's going to, if it is still causing problems, then we may have to just agree to temporarily close that pedestrian gate because what we don't want is yet more problems with vehicles getting in whilst we are getting it sorted out. So it may be we have to do a temporary, but we can make that decision based on what issues we get. It'd be very easy to order one of them for the box. It's, it's not. You can do it without ordering one of them anyway. It's just, if you buy the right materials, you can drop it in, drill it, put your piece in, piece of it, and then the bars, the drop bars are already on there. So they can drop straight in, but yeah. it just needs the at the minute they're flush to the ground mm -hmm. so they're dropping into a hole that's flush out of tarmac and it's probably i don't know i'm not seeing it but it's probably been broken pushed out mm -hmm. and they're scraping around because they're not going deep enough mm -hmm. if they can be made to go deeper 
with what you've got there, you won't need to spend much more time. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's brilliant. We'll have a look at that and get something sorted for our USA thing. Brilliant, thank you very much. So, that's how it's going to be then, isn't it? To agree the way forward regarding the vehicle gates will stay closed to vehicles. So, can I have a proposal, please? Stephen? Yeah. And Senator? Isabel? All agreed? Fantastic, thank you. Right, to discuss and agree the three trees from LCC and LALC. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <coughs> so, uh, we've been offered some free trees. There was an email came out that there's, there's a scheme through LCC whereby they're offering uh, various packs of trees. Uh, you have to specify exactly where they are going to mm -hmm. go to say and what they're going to be used for so we have got obviously never feel that we do need several trees in there to form the barrier between the football pitch and the play equipment and also more screening around so we've got a perfect opportunity to put in the application i think it needs to be by the end of this month mm -hmm. or the beginning of september or soon. end of september oh, i don't know I can't remember there was two different sizes of trees yes there was yeah so i think go we, to the more established. yes exactly that's what i was going to suggest we're going yeah. to the most established that we can get um, and as many as we can get because i'm sure we can find enough space to put them whether they all go down there or we could potentially put a few more in the picnic areas we had agreed previously, but we haven't actually done anything about that yet. Just not put it down on it, but also it's got to think about the future for maintenance. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you're looking at the size of the trees we're going to get, I know it's going to take a while, mm -hmm. but it's still going to be the parish's responsibility mm -hmm. in the future. Yeah. So, again, depending on what species they're going, where they're going, and obviously as well, you've got all the trees that Expel branches more. So you're looking Some are more higher maintenance than yeah. others, aren't they? And need topping out ever so often. Sorry, do we know if they're broadleaf trees? There was a, a, there was a quite list. a list of different trees list, think, within the package. Yeah, I think before we put in the application, if you're happy, Dan, if we can liaise with you and just bottom out which ones will be the best species to say. Okay. Yeah, is yeah. that okay? because we don't want to go and get a load of things that we can't then no. make use of. Yeah. And some species you cannot plant next to each other. No. So. It's a fault. It could be mine. I, I always forget to switch each other. Well, I've got to keep on from more. So, to agree to the free trees. So, can we agree to the free trees? Oh, yeah. Proposal? <laughs> Dan, you and yeah, we get you on. Sorry, I've got the agenda. Carol? All agreed. I promise not to put my hand on paper. Right, to agree the way forward with regard to the hole left by the fallen cedar tree, Park Road. Right, the way forward. Any suggestions? Because of, it is in an interesting place. I personally through the experience is put it back to the park manager when the town comes for him to look at it and then discuss it and put it back to us with ideas because I couldn't, I honestly couldn't tell you, I've never had to deal with anything like that. That's the first time I've seen it come up. The depth of the hole it's going to need, as far as I'm aware, the roots and everything taken out, it's going to be a big job. It's but quite a delicate job because of what's within the roots. I don't think this anything in the roots from what there's some stones within the there's, there's stones within the roots but mm -hmm. there's nothing else no, no no there's no the stones, so the stones can be manually lifted out mm -hmm. but again if we can put it back to the parks team for them to look at and to liaise back with us because that's it's not just as it's quite the it's a massive yeah. job. It's going, to be, it's going to need a crane and expect and everything to get the roofs out and it's going to cost a lot of money and I don't know if they'd have a better idea to do something that could put it back, make it safe for now and then look at the roots coming out later, you know, just to drop it back in. They might be able to work some out and I can't. I'm just going to it back in. Mm -hmm. 
but yeah, I don't like say it's yeah, it might need digging out further back and <coughs> letting them out to drop back. But yeah, because I mean, bearing mind this is over a year now, so a lot of debris has fallen in there as well. Now, yeah. we did have discussion uh, with parks manager when we did one of the uh, staff meetings earlier in the year um, and talked around different ideas and part of the idea was to try and dig out as much as we could and then try and manhandle as much back in to try and get it into some form of um, reasonable state. Um, several of the stones that are around that have been damaged slightly he felt that he would be able to manage to do something with. So. I think those are the priority, to try and get those sorted as quickly as we possibly can because obviously they have now been in that state for a while. Some just need standing back up and, and securing again. Um, there's not a huge amount of damage around. No. It, the main bit is where it's lifted. No. So I would propose that we at least start that process of putting right the damage around and then look at the bigger picture of the Massive. So, if we put this towards our next liaison group with the stuff, <coughs> what are we calling it now? It, it's work scheduling yes, work, work scheduling, scheduling meeting. Thank you. I will quite sure what he was calling it now. So, is everybody happy with that? So, can we agree that? Can I propose it, Carol? Mm -hmm. First, second. Okay, is it up? All agreed. Thank you. To agree to get three quotes for the cost in the sheet of the cemetery roof chapel. So as you know, it's this is dragging on quite a lot now with the paperwork and bits and pieces and the weather we've been having and what we will be having until this is sorted. We do need to at least try and protect what is there. Um, Steve. I think it's quite, we really just want to get on with it because mm. uh, I remember the public did bring that up in the public forum, so to acknowledge the fact that we are working on that, it would be a good idea to get those three quotes in and then we can take it from there. We do need to protect it, because mm. I mean, you know how long it's taking now to get any responses on the bits and pieces we need. We had a long response. No. Nothing, so no, we it's need been to over a month now since I sent the last letter to the planning department, or email rather. Mm -hmm. So, I think, yeah, something. it's imperative that we get it ready for the winter. Mm -hmm. And with the best weather in the world now, even if we got the go ahead next week to do the work, you've got at least an eight week lead time. Yeah. Our contractor that we had earmarked is potentially now going to be too busy and not be able to do it. So you're going to be looking springtime, I think, before you can actually do the work. Your main issue is going to be that you're going to have scaffolding costs to put you to sheeting up because they're not going to be able to do that off of a ladder. No, but we've got to do something. Yeah, I know, mm -hmm. but, but this is, so it may be, we, we did have an approach from somebody around scaffolding which we can look into whether we can do something with that which would reduce the cost potentially um, and then a price for the actual sheeting down because the scaffolding cost is going to be the bigger So we're looking at sheeting down the, the worst side or both sides? Both. Or both. Yeah. Rather than get it yeah. done. I think the uh, imperative thing is, as you say, is to protect it. The other, it's not a bonus at all because the work's got to be done, but with the delay, uh, because roofers tend to get busy in the worst of weather, is that that might take us into the next preset, which we could then, when we're, we're, when we're budgeting for our next year, we can actually get more money into the pot for the chapels, and so we can um, sort the work out properly. Okay, yes. yeah, that's, sorry. I sorry, Isabel, were you suggesting that the people doing the scaffolding will be different from the people applying the sheeting? Potentially. Oh, okay. Potentially, I think it needs investigating. Right. Um, it may be that we would have to go out and get quotes from three people for both. Yeah. But it may be that we could potentially reduce the cost by somebody getting involved in purely putting the scaffolding up for a lot less. So would a workman putting sheeting up be prepared to use somebody else? I don't know. Standard. That's something That's that we need to think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is something that we do. Can I just 
just just weird. Sorry, Dad, I don't want to hear. Um, but that happens all the time when they did the work on the church. So oh, now, it? Somebody else okay. put the, the scaffold. A company came in to do the scaffolding. Yeah, but they, they, they had, had a, a lot bigger job out of that. This is a sheeting job. But my point being is that it was a different company that did the scaffolding oh, yeah. than another company coming to do all the work. They then came and then the scaffold has come back. So it's quite a common thing that mm -hmm. scaffolding okay. goes up and yeah. Okay. I'm not sure about obviously the damage the leaking of the roof. If we were looking from Park Road, mm -hmm. is the one side worse than the other? Because I, I do know when I've been in there previously, the right hand side looking from Park Road, that's dry in there. Apart yeah, from the back side which has got tiles missing. Mm -hmm. The left hand side is bad. Just it is bad, but it's also got a very soil uh, um, floor still, hasn't it? Yeah. So it's gonna get damp constantly. Yeah. It, it, like it's house. running down the walls. Yeah. It, it, it is that side that is the priority and, and when we discussed it at full council earlier it was agreed that should the budget be such that we couldn't afford to do both that would be the priority that we would do yeah. but from safety aspect of keeping the other side from more damage through the winter time because if we lose some more slates and high winds etc then you're going to start getting water on the other side as well so it would be sensible <coughs> to sheet both mm -hmm. but your priority for your work to actually commence would be on the left, left hand side right. looking from part right okay. see i thought it was the right hand side being done first no, it's not done. No. from, from part road, road it depends which way you're looking yeah. at yeah because that's where the majority of the work had already been done to preserve what's been done yeah, but it's the other side that's the worst. I know it's the worst, but you've also got to preserve what work's already been done as well. And that's the side they've been using, isn't it? It is, and the agreement was to do both. Mm -hmm. That is the agreement. But if they find more issues once they strip off the roof, to be able to placate that, we did say that if that were to happen and it meant that the budget would not stretch to doing both, we would concentrate on that one side, which was the worst side. Mm -hmm. okay. But by the sheeting of both, they're both protected, so oh, yeah, you're yeah. getting two birds at one side. So, do you agree to get three quotes for the cost of sheeting to the same chapel's roof? Can I have a proposal, please? Second of all, you can ask all agree. Thank you very much. Um, you have to put that out to a few companies, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, to agree the new memorial application form. Yeah. Did you say it on the <coughs> no, I haven't. Good work, yeah, I like it. Mm, it was one of our memorial masons that put me onto it, so I can't take credit. Ah. <coughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So very straightforward, very good. Mm -hmm. So to agree the new memorial application form. You have a proposal? Yeah. Stephen? Oh, all agreed. Thank you very much. To agree to the gas cutting prices and options. And uh, that needs to go into closed session, please, due to the nature of the business. Oh, I'll so. please. Sorry, Stephen. Second day, Isabel. All agreed. Thank you very much. Allotments update, please. Do you want me to do that? Yeah, um, yeah, the, yeah they've. Um, they finished, as I said, finished today at Battlefield, um, and he's um, the big pile under the not wisteria, but yeah. Um, that they've done several trial holes there, down to 0 0.5 and 0 0.7 of a metre, and they found very little. Um, they have taken some samples. They said it's negligible what's been found. Um, and they have sent some samples off. They've cleared the bit laying on the ground on the roadway and when they've hand-picked that particular area, they found a couple of tiny bits. Again, they've taken samples and sent off. The shed at the end is down and the asbestos is being taken away and the wood has been left behind. Um, so it's, it's a lot less really? than... Mm taken care of. It's good. Yeah. Taken good. Care of yeah. now, so. yeah. <coughs> it's good. Um, nice and sweet. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. Thank That's you. the update on the allotments. Um, nature Reserve, I think Stephen's got a bit of an update with that one. 
Um, yeah, in our last meeting, um, I agreed that I would contact the rescue people for the ducks, which <coughs> I have had a meeting with them now. Um, we just had a little chat about how they go about things, as we believe the previous council just allowed them to go in and out, which we agree that's not safe. Um, so they have run through their procedure. They did advise us that on occasion they've been in, in about seven times, but on many occasions they will attract the injured bird out with food, um, but it's only a few times they've gone over the gate, which I said is not acceptable. Um, so what we've said is, is that um, we really should come up with some advice from our insurers um, and maybe look at that waiver we talked about. She's quite clear that when, if we were to give access via the gate and she goes in there, she's doing it under her own duress, as in not our responsibility, she's doing her rescue work, because if we said no, she would do it anyway, and we'd rather try and keep her safe. Um, she always goes down there in twos. Um, so I think that- She goes in twos, um, not all adults. No, but we would stipulate two adults. They've got a contact across the road um, in case of um, an incident and they both have their mobile phones on them. Um, but they do know that what they're doing is actually under their own steam as opposed to under our authority. And our obligation is to make sure that we're not putting obstacles in the way such as the fence. Um, so. I would say that we would get some advice from the insurers, mm -hmm. see if a waiver would um, be acceptable um, to allow access by the gate, which would mean issuing a key, um, and come up with um, a agreement that full council would accept to give her permission to continue her rescue work without being challenged. Yeah, okay. So, are you happy to speak to the insurers for mm -hmm. the future? Yeah, is everybody happy with that? Yeah, do it brilliant. Yeah. Could I just ask that if the insurers come back and we can do the way that we then agenda it for full council? Yeah. Just so we get it agreed that way. Yeah, get it done. So that, yeah, it's, it's super. No, that'd be brilliant. Thank mm -hmm. you very much for that. Right, has anybody got any items for discussion and next agenda item requests? Um, yeah, um, I'd like an update on the dog drove allotments. Um, mm -hmm. We talked about the roadway there, yeah. and I noticed it wasn't on the allotments update, which I can understand this was doing with the, um, the asbestos, which is fab. Um, but we really ought to, Next as we're getting into, yeah, this winter months is going to become more mm -hmm. dangerous yeah. down there. And um, so um, I'd like to add that to the agenda for the next meeting, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you come up with anything, please let Jan know within the next couple of weeks and um, we'll get it sorted. Confirm date and venue of next Open Spaces Committee meeting. Well, can we confirm the venue. Where will that be? Probably here. <coughs> um, you said probably. <laughs> or at Camp Jim. Or Dutch. Um, date, um, is anybody away in four weeks' time? Oh, what a date. <coughs> um, four weeks' time is not possible because that is, um, events got there first. <laughs> chut, chut. That's only because I couldn't do the next day. <laughs> um, Sorry. 22nd what day is, that? is a Wednesday, but planning got there first. <coughs> We're like the... The last. last. <laughs> <laughs> we cover 90% of the parish council and we're the last. <laughs> why, don't we, why don't we be brave and do it in three weeks then? Yeah, we'll do it in three weeks. Can you get the info oh, on bits I'm and pieces? I'm not around. <laughs> I'm thinking about getting the quotes from What? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so we've got. We'll do it next week, Sean. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do it. Is it 21st? What day is it? Tuesday. 21st September. Is that good for everybody? As far as I know, I can't have a day with you, but it's Tuesday, is it? I won't be awkward. I shall make it happen. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 
Thank you very much. Thank you.